cancer affects a lot of people but it is one of the cancers with a good prognosis as it is very slow growing risk factors for colorectal cancer include lifestyle older age inherited genetic disorder other risk factors include diet smoking alcohol and lack of physical activity family history of colon cancer and colon polyps and presence of colon polyps per se a diet high in rich processed meat while low in fiber increases the risk of colorectal cancer. In this episode of Let's Talk Health, let us meet such people who have problems in the colon and let's learn about risk factors, warning signs and the latest treatment. Till a few decades ago, the incidence rates of colorectal diseases were significantly low in India. However, with rapid urbanization and lifestyle changes in the country, the diseases of the colon and rectum have seen a steady increase in numbers. The gastrointestinal tract starts from the mouth to the anus. There is the upper intestine and the lower intestine. So the lower intestine is made up of the colon and the rectum. So the function of the colon and rectum is to, uh, as the digested food passes through the colon and rectum, the water is absorbed and the motions are formed and it stores the motion in the rectum and then it's evacuated outside. So essentially, any disturbance to its function will produce symptoms of you know, colorectal disease. When the colon does not function properly, it sends out some signals. These are the common symptoms one should not ignore. Pain in the abdomen, sickness and vomiting, constipation and diarrhea that is never ending, rectal bleeding, weight loss and fever. Generally, um, the, pa the patients think, uh, you know, most of the complaints that they have, uh, for them everything fits under one umbrella, piles. They, they would probably uh, call everything as piles. And, um, but then, uh, I don't think there's anything particularly to be embarrassed about. It's much easier to seek help first. But then you just see, um, you know, that you've been investigated and the serious component is uh, ruled out. And if that is the case, then most of these uh, minor perianal complaints would not need anything um, interventional in most cases. If you see 100 patients who have uh, significant perianal complaints, my personal feeling is that maybe five of them would need surgery. Colorectal diseases comprise of a broad range of conditions and ailments, the severity of which can vary from being mildly irritating to life-threatening conditions like colorectal cancers. Colorectal cancer is um, something um, you know, peculiar in the sense uh, it, it takes a sort of a sequence from something which is totally benign, which moves on to, over a period of time, moves on to something which is uh, uh, just before um, you know, invasive cancer. If it is properly uh, you know, screened and if you can pick it up early, then the chance of getting a cure with colorectal cancer seems to be significantly better than most other cancers. So that is the reason why uh, it's better that uh, you know, people are aware of their colonic symptoms, whether it's bleeding or pain or lower abdominal pain, whatever it may be, or they're seeing black colored stools. It's important that they get themselves investigated for that. Like most common cancers, the treatment options for colorectal cancer do depend on the stage it is in and the spread of the disease. The three main treatments are surgery, it plays a pivotal role in removing the tumor, chemotherapy is a drug treatment that uses powerful chemicals to kill the fast-growing cells in the body, radiation treatment is the use of precisely calculated doses of x-rays to treat the parts of the body where cancer has spread. It could be something very simple like hemorrhoids or fissures but I think if, if you have symptoms persistent for more than four weeks of rectal bleeding, altered bowels, i.e. diarrhea, or constipation, incomplete evacuation, passing of mucus, anal pain, for more than four weeks I think you should seek help. Go see a local doctor 
and they should have a rectal examination done. That's the basic minimum. And if the doctor feels that more tests are done, required, then you can go for for the endoscopic evaluation and testing. In this episode, we look at the stories of two individuals who underwent successful colorectal procedures to lead a happy and healthy life. Ever since retirement, 70-year-old Amla Nathan was leading a stress-free life. Until he started experiencing persistent bouts of dysentery and gastrointestinal bleeding, creating a major disruption in his everyday life. In the evening, I go for evening walk. I walk about 5 kilometers a day. So I was started walking. And suddenly one day I noticed my motion dark. So I went to the same doctor and checked up with him. He said, tomorrow you come with me to colonoscopy. When he checked up hemoglobin, it was 13.5. He said, you are all right. But when he checked up this one, he was all right. Yes, there are full blood. So it is better. Uh, I think it is not in colon. It must be in intestine. After the initial diagnosis by his family doctor, Amala Nathan went to another healthcare provider where the doctor studied his case history and recommended an immediate surgical intervention. Mr. Amal Nathan, he um, came to me with a history of having had black stool for which he was actually admitted and treated elsewhere about 10 days earlier. He had actually fainted. Uh, he had noticed the black stool, as I recall, he probably did not think much of it. But he did go uh, you know, giddy and I think he fainted. And he was investigated elsewhere, no obvious cause was found. He had a colonoscopy at that point in that institution. But um, obviously with the black stools in the uh, colon, visualization gets very difficult. And uh, because his uh, symptoms improved, he got discharged. He had another episode and that's when he came to us. Uh, this time we did do a repeat colonoscopy. We found uh, an abnormal area which we thought may be cancer. He had a biopsy, but I think we went on and did a bleed scan which localized the bleed uh, to one portion of his uh, large intestine, the right half of it. And uh, we thought it was a solitary diverticular which was bleeding. And because he continued to drop hemoglobin and he needed about six units within, uh, if I recall, six units of blood transfusion. So we had to go ahead and operate on him. He was like a friend to me. He explained everything. You can do it with medicine because we have a lot of medicine which are much, much advanced. We can stop it. But you will have a fear. Every day you look at your motion and see what is happening, what is happening. We can say it cannot happen. It can happen after four months, after one year. Then finally he decided. You want surgery or he left it to my arms. Then I consulted my son. They told me, Daddy best is surgery. Amala Nathan underwent a right hemicolectomy to cure his debilitating condition. The bowel is a tube of intestine which runs from the stomach to the back passage. The lower part of the bowel is called the colon. The colon starts just to the right of the waistline and runs up under the ribs, across the tummy and down the left side where it becomes the rectum. If the problem is on the right hand side of the colon, the diseased part of the right colon and a small piece of the upper bowel have to be taken out. The ends of the rest of the bowel are joined up inside the tummy. He had, uh, I would say, is a, a rarer condition because he had a solitary um, lesion in the right half of the colon. Normally, diverticular bleeds are from the left side of the large intestine. So he had a uh, robotic uh, right hemicolectomy, so to speak, uh, which, uh, where we remove a portion of his uh, small bowel, in the last six, in six inches of it and the right side of the cord and we joined him up. He, I'm sure he's doing very well. So I came home. After that, recovery is good. So I started going for the evening walk and uh, 
I think things are moving the way in which I want. So I appreciate what Dr. Arnott has done to me. It is something very good to me. And I have to do one after one month I went to Apollo for this. Just check up. They checked up my hemoglobin. It is okay. Surgery, Amalanathan had a speedy recovery and resumed his 5km daily walk to the church with much gusto. Like Amalanathan, one should never ignore the slightest of signs that can lead to bigger health complications. If anybody has symptoms around daliness and if they are trivial um, in their mind, um, I would just sincerely suggest to them that they sh if it is persisting, You, I can pray to God, God, please treat this. But God will definitely save you. But the thing is, you have to go to the doctor. Through the doctor, the God who works. To me, if you ask me, God works through Ravana, doctor. That's the way I see it. Today, Amala Nathan is leading a healthy lifestyle. He feels joyful, satisfied and alive in every moment. Like most people, Krishnan kept dismissing rectal bleeding as a symptom of piles and was reluctant to get it investigated. Watch his story on the other side of the break.